Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Start, sir. Hello, welcome to the first live session of Structures One course. Uh, this is Professor Ronnie Kroos. And in our team, two teaching assistants are also available. They are uh, Mr. Shupen Kumar Shah and Mr. Vikash Koshi. They are senior research scholars uh, under my guidance at the Department of Aerospace Engineering. So, If you have any question, I think we can start with. There are a few questions already we have seen. And those questions are uh, difference between multi-spar and multi-reconstruction of wing. Which construction of wing is better? Uh, if we talk about this so if we talk about that uh, multi spar wing case In general, uh, all wings are made of more than one spar. Minimum two spar are generally used. In very old, uh, old aircraft wing, uh, there used to be configurations where uh, a single spar used to be used, but uh, now it is much more popular to use multi spar and get, get it distributed. So if we see difference between multi spar spar and multi construction, which construction of wing is better. And uh, so it is desirable always to put more than one spar, at least two and to continue with that concept and multi rib uh, definitely it has to have multi rib otherwise we cannot maintain the profile of of the section so we need to go to the multi rib construction so uh, good morning everyone whoever has joined in the live session so the next question, if we look at uh, I see in the live session like in Woodin and Shantanu Chakravarti and uh, Mr. John, Mr. Rohan, sorry, Rahman, uh, there are many Mengani, S. Mengani is also there. So, good morning, everyone. So, let me address the second question. If I go to the second question, question is Can your course should be easily understood? Understood. 
and level so it is difficult to say i have tried my best to make it easy uh, but i am not sure how far i, am, I have done it uh, so course recordings are all done it is up to you whether you understand the course well or not if you have any doubt we may discuss we may continue so the third question see if i go uh, what is aircraft designed and how to design the aircraft this topic i think uh, i can discuss a little bit more i will try to discuss this later the third question uh, the fourth question if i go which is the best material to fabricate regular class rc aircraft wingspan 3 meter this is uh, though it is not okay we can bring in here uh, which is the best material best is always changing with time but with the consideration of present day material if you do with 3 meter wingspan in our department we have built 3 meter wingspan glider solar glider that we made with wood only balsa wood but uh, instead of that uh, that experience flutter flutter is a dynamic phenomena that we have not discussed in our course here but uh, we can we can go for advanced material materials like laminated composite material uh now laminated composite materials are available in our country also there are some companies in bangalore and there are some companies in gujarat also they have come up with fabrication technology uh, you can go for fabrication with that you can buy sheet from there and you can easily use some diamond cutter to cut those in shapes and you can use those things for fabrication of printer wings and UAV or RC aircraft, it is not very difficult to fabricate it. That will give you better stiffness, better stability. Frequency will be higher, so uh, it will it will be easier. Wing particularly flutter can be avoided with that. I guess though it requires a lot of other testing before we come into those and uh, in live session i don't see much uh, questions uh, only few of them have come here so uh, let me discuss the question as i told you to discuss last that is the aircraft design and how to design the aircraft aircraft designing is altogether a huge vast area to discuss with aircraft design cannot be discussed over the desk here but since there are not many questions now we can start discussing aircraft designing aircraft designing is basically put into two three segments two three segments in the sense we say the conceptual design okay aircraft design is always there to talk with but uh, there is one more question what is the difference between statically determinate and indeterminate in both external as well as internal okay uh, statically determinate and indeterminate question while we talk about uh while we are not able to find the solution with the equation of statics or in case of plane charge that there are three equations and in case of um, space stars are structured there are six equations and we are not able to unknown is more than that we call that as statically indeterminate structure but um, while we will be going to the more advanced um, forces you will see all the structures are have are comes into the category of statically indeterminate structures and advanced numerical methods are used to find out solution for those if we over over uh, a video conference like this it is difficult to tell you um, what is 
statically determinate and what is not statically determinate. I think I have covered in my course uh, in a simplified way. Is equation same for both? Uh, force equations and moments, moment equations are there. Principally, those equations are same. Yes, what you are saying m plus r equals to 2j, that is for plain truss case. So, for other structures, it is not like that. And it, it is, as I told you, depending on the plane or space structure, truss or structure, whatever. We consider truss as the simplified structure to continue and uh, that is the reason we always bring example of trust because number of unknowns are defined that way. Sir, what is the basic function of formers? And I cannot understand the difference between the formers and bulkheads, right? This is really a confusing talk. It's a good question. Formers are, we can consider as a, a uh, combination of the other way, I should say, a bulkhead is combination of, of uh, formats, you can say. A bulkhead, if it is uh, divided in small parts and distributed over a length, we can say that as a format. So that is the most modern uh, way of constructing the aircraft. So that is, the, if you look at the formats uh, technology to build the modern aircrafts where you will see, and there we won't find that big bulkheads. So we can consider that those bulkheads are distributed as formers throughout the section. Next question, if I go for Mr. John. Pin joint 2D statically determinate condition. Question five, correct answer is given as 3M plus R is, is equals to three. Three J, uh, which is correct, sir. Um, this we'll discuss later. This one uh, is is well defined in book. I don't find any any point of discussing this thing. So if there is a mistake in the question, we'll correct it or we'll take care of it. What's your thought of urban air model mobility? Uh, urban air mobility is a, a, is a new term now and uh, this is uh, getting day by day most more popular. So uh, it is difficult to predict now, but it is getting popular with advancement of engine related to related to electric engines. It is it is going getting popular day by day, and the design of aircraft is also becoming much easier day by day. There are different softwares as I, I was talking about in relation to in relation to, to the um, aircraft design. The aircraft design is consists of three basic stages. We say the conceptual design, preliminary design or, or the detailed design. So conceptual design stage, what do we do? We try to fix the configuration, the range, the payload, whatever uh, it is going to experience. And we try to fix the overall parameters, uh, that how many engines are required, or how it could be. Uh, we always try to discuss designing with respect to fixed plane configuration, but as with respect to the urban. Sometimes it is difficult to imagine 3D, 3D object on a 2D paper. Can you please suggest some tricks 
our idea. Uh, imagination, tricks, and idea. How it is? It is own matter. Uh, I have tried my best to to show you different figures, different isometric views to give you the three-dimensional understanding. But otherwise, it is difficult to give you. That is the reason there we lack lack the facility of interaction or classroom interaction. Unless we have classroom interaction, it is difficult to give you three D imagination. Even if here, if I use my hands, I cannot give you three D because it is a two D of uh, thing what you see. So it is difficult. So the next. Question: As in case of a landing gear problem, it is difficult to imagine. Yes, it is difficult to imagine. I understand. That is the reason I have tried tried to give you different types of isometric views. Uh, you, probably you have seen while I have solved the problem in the wing bending also. There I have tried my best with additional figures. To give you understanding how the bending moment acts on on the wing, how do we calculate segment by segment the bending moment and we add it up in the table? So unless we go in classroom in, in a visual conventional mode classroom, it is difficult to give you 3D understanding. Um, then, sir, why is why IC engines are not used in commercial aircraft in order to decrease weight. Uh, this is though in my, not in my area, it is a totally propulsion uh, subject area. But see, always in whenever we think of uh, aircraft or a flying vehicle, their weight matters, efficiency matters, and the thrust produced in unit time is also matters. So I see in internal combustion engines are used in, in piston prop aircrafts. In old days, it used to be used. Still, it is used. There are still many agricultural aircrafts which use IC engines, but not the IC engine what is, which is used in car. So there is a big difference. There are more thrusts are required. So a, a, in a different configuration, the engines are fabricated and the rotary motion, more thrust is produced and uh, that way it is used. So it is used, not that it is not used in order to decrease weight. Uh, decreasing weight, uh, is, though, as I said, it is a completely a different area. Okay, um, in rally range method, we assume the curve of the deflection, and our answer will be based on the assumption of the function. So, what should be the criteria to assume the function for the curve of deflection? Right, this is a very, very good question. Rally range method is a very, very important method to understand. We need to consider the functions or the shape which is practically possible and which is conforming to the boundary condition, which it has to satisfy the boundary condition. If you look at the example what we have solved, there we consider the sine function because while the deflection takes place, the deflection is very close to the sine function. So that is the reason we got a relatively close answer to sine function. But if we consider more variables, and then the results will be more close, close to it, and we need to consider more terms in the series to find out the better solution. So the basic fundamental idea is that you have to consider the solution admissible for the boundary condition. If you consider a shape which is not at all possible uh, while the deflection is taking place, then you won't get a result. So that is a prime criterion in case of rally method. So
So we've got uh, when there is yet a discussion, we go back to the aircraft design topic as we have we are considering. So uh, so in that the first conceptual stage we we try to fix the dimensions, type of engines used, what type of wing, tail plane, uh, those are to be used, what should be the length, diameter of fuselage, all those things we do, try to estimate roughly the gross weight, because gross weight, to, gross weight governs the total design. And then part by part, we go for the preliminary design. Preliminary design, which are we, in preliminary design, we go for the aerodynamic design in a refined way, whether we can, we are able to lift the total weight or not, what should be the cruise speed, cruise velocity, all those things we continue. And in case of detailed design, we go for articulated manner, the structures or propulsion, parts to design piece by piece, uh, everything like in that detail design stage, we go for designing the individual spar, stringers, reeds, skins, all those things part by part we design. Uh, as there are several methods available for solving the problems, there are only for our convenience, these are only for our convenience or any other perspective. Okay, okay. This is another good question. Uh, many methods are discussed. So why those many methods, but I understand from the question, why those many methods are discussed? What is the aim of discussing those that many methods? So, uh, it is to give you the idea how the methods are invented from one to the other. And in some cases, we don't want to go for a detailed analysis to find out the reflection. And we may go for a simplified analysis like the unit load method or Castiglano's theorem method to find out reflection, but why we go for advanced derivations uh, or applicable maybe for finite element analysis or some other cases, there we may go for relative method or advanced method for formulation. So keeping in mind all those things, different methods are developed and are used, but all the methods are used still in industry depending on the case. If we want a easy approximate solution, generally we use the Castiglano's theorem method or other methods. And while we go for fundamental research, uh, we generally go for those things related to advanced energy methods like LH or other methods, dimensional principle approaches, those we use and we find out. Okay. As there are several methods, okay. then like the results will be quite similar with all the several methods. So there are many advantages of method over the other. Any advantages over the other methods? So that's what uh, I discussed, that it gives advantage depending on the situation, what we want to do. So we do that depending upon the situation, what type of solution we want for, for easy estimation, approximate estimation, we go for Castiglianos theorem or unit load method and others and for detailed things like the finite element method that is based on other variational principle or relative method on those principle and then other advanced way it is done. So uh, with this respect if we 
come back to our discussion related to the aircraft design as i was discussing things what we are learning in this course like the reflection and in the next part what we will be learning related to the stress <coughs> so stress determination strain determination and how and what is important in which case those things if we see uh, those are applicable mainly in, in time of detail analysis so that is the reason in many cases we see that the aircraft design is to some extent disjoint from these basic things what we learn in our second year third year level or fourth year level the first stage of conceptual design is uh, is done and then for preliminary and detailed design we go for using the knowledge of detail analysis what we learn during our detailed course uh, maybe in second year third year or fourth year level so detailed design design becomes more important otherwise uh, nothing will sustain say if a during design if a simple wheel fails or a the total aerodynamic lift loss will take place and it will lead to failure so final important thing is the how do we design each and individual part and that is the reason we go for design to do the more stress and fundamental things in our detailed courses and in this type of courses uh, uh, we'll text transcript files to be provided for your course yes text transcript files are being prepared i will get the text transcript files but i have a question to you why are you interested for text transcript files how how does it help anyway so in the next part of the course what we will be covering is uh, fundamental theory of elasticity and theory of elasticity is the most fundamental way of analyzing structure so with respect to that unless you have clear idea of stress strain in two dimensional and three dimensional level we won't be able to solve problem and uh, in our aircraft structure torsion is also a very, very important problem so from theory of elasticity point of view torsion problems are also solved solved in our course we have also solved problems associated with a hole in a structure that is very important because uh, to make aircraft structure lightweight we always create hole we remove material try to reduce the weight whenever the need of material we remove the material and we, we try to reduce the weight but that may have adverse effect uh, you will see that there are examples and how the hole shape should be that is also important there are examples of rectangular window which create which lead to a catastrophic failure of aircraft a total fuse fuse latch got torn apart so that created a bad problem uh, so after that people were behind understanding the problem and they have developed uh, they have found out that from the corner of the sometimes you give additional comments okay text transcripts for additional comments okay if that way it is beneficial it can be but see why we speak we sometimes need coherence of of language so that you have to see okay if it is beneficial we try we are doing we are in the job we'll 
try to solve that problem. And as I was discussing that uh, from the corners of the rectangular window of aircraft, there was a catastrophic failure. And then uh, people understood that, that because of that corner, uh, stress concentration takes place. And that stress concentration leads to failure. So, following that, uh, we, we thought of putting elliptical or circular holes, and that is uh, to some extent uh, stable till date. So, but how that happens, we should have clear idea about those things. That is the reason we have. We, we are going through the course in the second four half portion of the of our course in the detail of theory of elasticity. Sir, I have one more question. If I want to work on any research project with you, what will be the procedure? I think that is not the course topic. Sir, I have one more question. If you, what will be the procedure? So this is not a course topic today. I would not like to answer that now. Maybe sometime later we will see that window. So uh, so theory of elasticity, understanding theory of elasticity is important that way. As somebody already have raised a question of three-dimensional and two-dimensional imagination, there also we will see how do we, we imagine three-dimensional stress condition, strain condition. But again, I have tried to put figures, I have tried to explain with visuals, give you the idea of how stresses act and which way it acts, how does it behaves, but it is difficult to say all those things over over this type of interaction platform. Uh, can tell about jet engine, sorry, jet engine is not my topic. I cannot tell you more. But I can tell you that uh, jet engine, the way you know, I don't know your background. Uh, technically, jet engines are getting outdated now, nowadays. Most most popular configuration of engine is turbo fan engine. So you need to go more into those engine segment. Engine is inter interesting, I know, but this is structures related discussion and I am not the person to say anything about this in the end. Okay, so as I was discussing about the theory of elasticity approach, uh, theory of elasticity we need to learn to visualize stress and strain configuration, uh, how does it act, where it becomes maximum, then comes uh, the concept of principal stress, principal Stress means what is the maximum stress is experienced, normal stress is experienced. How do we find out those and how those things are important? Uh, a good example, uh, though I have not discussed in, in the course, but you can easily find out the solution that that problem I can say now, maybe if possible, I will discuss sometime in our next interaction session, if I remember. I am a young scientist at national level. Okay, this question will come, I guess. So, it is something like, if we take a chalk, the problem I was discussing, if, I, if we take a chalk, and twist it, we will see that uh, the chalk fails in a 45 degree angle. Why that failure happens? Uh, that is very interesting thing. 
but uh, if we take other materials uh, like tensile testing of steel bar, if we go for, if you are from solid mechanics background, I guess you all of you are from that background, you will find that the failure uh, is not on the surface in that physical manner, it is inside in some particular degree angle, but not on the surface. So that cup cone shape is something different and here it fails in a physical manner. So those things, why that takes place, why, how, which one becomes important, which failure strength becomes important, those things. Are, though failure we have not discussed, but that is that we cannot visualize unless we have a better understanding on the uh, different types of stresses and strains. So, with uh, this note, uh, if I don't have any more questions, uh, I'm telling, sir, what is your opinion on that? There is only one AL225 aircraft. What would be the result of only one? Uh, it is not only one aircraft is there in cargo segment. There are many cargo aircrafts are there. But AN225 is really huge aircraft. It, it is made huge for particular purpose, but for that it has different disadvantages also. Like the wingspan is more than 80 meters. So it is not uh, operable in many uh, airport in, in throughout the world. So there are a few airports where, where it can be used. So there are disadvantages along with that huge size also. So that is, that is one major disadvantage of AM25. Advantage is that the huge capacity that we agree. But uh, you, you try to search internet now, all these data are available over internet. You need not to spend many, much more time. You can find many aircraft, but you will find that most of the cargo aircrafts fall in that wingspan category of 80 meters. And that was a major bottleneck for A380. They reduced it with a lot of effort. The A380 design was initial design of was more than eight, 80 meter wingspan and they reduced it to I think 79.8 or something close margin. Okay, anyway, that's a different topic. Sir, can you tell about the Tejas aircraft? No, I am I was involved in Tejas aircraft with some testing only, but I don't have much more idea about it. We did some structural testing. That's all. But I don't know more about it as well. So at that cargo aircraft group, if you see different cargo aircrafts are built for different reasons. I know one firefighting aircraft, which is a modification of uh, Boeing 737 I think. That is, that is uh, civil aircraft is totally completely changed to a firefighting cargo aircraft. There are huge tanks are installed inside and those tanks are specially made to store firefighting retardant agent and that is used. So it depends on the purpose. Design is a huge, completely a different area. As I told you, in our fourth year class design is covered and they are only covered the conceptual side of the design. Uh, sir, can they just carry nuclear bombs? No idea. Sorry. So, as I told you, depends on the use it is a, a, the other way in 225 or antenna 225 is also hired by US agencies like NASA also to carry their their, their rocket parts 
from one one place to the other so it is useful so everything has some good side and it has some bad side also so overall way the course is our course is designed to give you some idea about what kind of what kind of things are what kind of uh, kind of loads are experienced by aircraft where which type of load comes how do we analyze try to find out bending moment shear force of the total aircraft and uh, how do we find out each and individual part deflection those were, those things we have covered in the pre medicine portion and in the post medicine portion which is more fundamental in nature there we have covered about theory of elasticity if we learn theory of elasticity that will open more avenues in the structure side structure analysis side sir i am a eighth class in eighth class and i love to know about aircraft so can you tell which book should i read okay uh, the good book is in that stage is flight without formula uh, i think that is written, written by andersen um, so flight. there are four parts flight without formula you can easily buy those low price editions are available those are very good book to start with flight without formula that will really create good and enthusiasm and an inquisitive idea about aircraft apart from your courses on nptel i be happy if you share some guidance to work on any research topic in ipgt this is not a topic of discussion apart from your course on nptel of okay, the same question repeated so please give stress on theory of elasticity part stress on the earlier part part that is not fundamental in nature uh, that will come in the post uh, and <laughs> i'm saying post made sem it is not post made sem of may will start from fifth lecture and so fifth week lecture fifth sixth and seventh fifth sixth seventh and eighth like week lecture we will give those i have tried to define stress strain first and then we have solved some problems and with that uh, we have concluded our course so we are almost at the end of the session because of some technical problem we started uh, few minutes late but anyway if there is no more question we may try to conclude uh, mr john is saying sir final exam question pattern time duration etc can you please tell about it it is already well defined by organizers uh, there is no scope of going more than that so you follow those you will get the answers for this type of question and other things uh, so there is a suggestion for g kumar from uddin mr n uddin you may follow so if you don't have any more question we would like to conclude today's session and with this uh, thank you everyone for attending the 
entire comes structures one course uh, if you if it is possible please go for the exam uh, i want to mean that certificate exam and it will be nice experience for you and uh, with that note we will conclude today's session and join that again with the maybe in the seventh or eighth week uh, i'll join in one more live session and would like to interact with you thank you so So please wait sir.